Thesis 2. The monster always escapes. We see the damage that the monster wreaks, the material remains, the footprints of the yeti across Tibetan snow, the bones of the giant stranded on a rocky cliff. But the monster itself turns immaterial and vanishes to reappear someplace else. For who is the yeti if not the medieval wild man? Who is the wild man if not the biblical and classical giant? No matter how many times King Arthur killed the ogre of Mount St. Michael, the monster reappeared in another heroic chronicle, bequeathing the Middle Ages an abundance of mort d'arteur. Regardless of how many times Sigourney Weaver's beleaguered Ripley utterly destroys the ambiguous alien that stalks her, its monstrous progeny return, ready to stalk again in another bigger-than-ever sequel. No monster tastes of death but once. The anxiety that condenses like green vapor into the form of the vampire can be dispersed temporarily, but the revenant by definition returns. And so the monster's body is both corporal and incorporeal. Its threat is its propensity to shift. <laughs>